Welcome to First Aid, and the topic within this First Aid course is going to pertain to heat-related illnesses. My name is Marcus Wiesaw, and I will be your instructor for this course, and so my information is listed on the screen. If you need to contact me for any reason or for any questions, feel free to do so. Let's go over the heat-related illness objectives. There are three. I want you to know the difference between the two types of heat illnesses, know the basic facts, and know the precautions to take if a person is working in the heat, uh, such as an employee or yourself. And so the difference between the two types of heat related illnesses, there are primarily two. The first is heat exhaustion, okay, which is literally the precursor to heat stroke. And heat stroke is uh, much more serious and it's uh, potentially life-threatening. So if you look at the, the, some of the symptoms of heat exhaustion, uh, heat exhaustion causes dizziness, headaches, sweaty skin, rapid heartbeats, nausea, vomiting, weakness, and cramping. Okay. Heat stroke, on the other hand, is much more serious and it causes uh, red, hot, and dry skin, uh, causes uh, a very high temperature, uh, internal uh, body temperature rises significantly, it causes confusion and disorientation, it causes some people to faint, uh, in medical science they call that syncope, and it also causes convulsions. And one of the primary differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke is that when an individual suffers from heat stroke, they actually lose the ability to sweat. So uh, if someone's suffering from heat exhaustion, they can still sweat. And so we still have uh, a little bit uh, more of a uh, more of an option to, to get somebody to a cool area and hydrate them, whereas heat stroke... Uh, uh, requires an immediate emergency room visit. So know the facts. Okay? Heat stroke. It happens when your body core temperature is greater than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat exhaustion happens when the body temperature is greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. If either heat stroke or heat exhaustion happens, uh, remove a person or an employee from the heat to a shady, cool, dry area, if at all possible. Remove their clothing and soak them in cool water or ice. Uh, depending on the scenario, use your best judgment and, and kind of determine what the best action to take is. But in general, getting them out of the heat and into a cool area is probably one of the best things that you can do. Uh, if heat exhaustion occurs, get the person to drink some cool water and just take some sips. Uh, don't tell they're going to be very tempted to to drink uh, a lot of water immediately, and uh, don't don't allow them to do that. Just uh, they can get sick if if they don't take it easy. Uh, if heat cramps occur, uh, have the person drink water or Gatorade every 15 to 20 minutes. That helps. Uh, Gatorade's good because it provides a lot of electrolytes, and they have a lot of other options as well. I think Propel, uh, Gatorade, and then uh, they have uh, several other uh, different drink mixes that you can purchase at, uh, at different stores that can actually provide electrolytes and not so much sugar. Uh, Gatorade has a lot of sugar in it, so for people that don't want that much sugar uh, there all there are uh, many alternatives uh, if heat rash occurs keep it dry by placing a powder on it uh, don't don't put a cream on, on any heat rash and so let's go ahead and move on to the next slide here on precautions so in order to prevent heat exhaustion and ultimately heat stroke here's a list of precautions that every worker can take during the hot summer months in order to uh, best address this issue. First and foremost, drink water every 15 minutes even if you're not thirsty. Uh, you want to stay hydrated and make sure that you got plenty of fluids coming uh, into your body because you're likely going to be sweating if it's, if it's quite hot out. Uh, watch out for each other. Uh, bring water to each other. Encourage other people to take some breaks in the shade and 
uh, in the great state of California, uh, it's actually uh, regulatory law that in the summer months, workers uh, who work outside uh, take so many breaks in the shade. And the reason the state implemented uh, this rule is because of the number of people uh, coming down with heat exhaustion and heat stroke. So they had quite a bad problem uh, for some time. Uh, wear a hat and light colored clothing, as you all probably remember from basic science courses, as dark colors absorb more heat and they're hotter to wear. Uh, know where you're at in case you need to call 911. It's always good to uh, know where the nearest hospitals are and understand uh, what you need to do in case of an emergency. Again, rest in the shade. Take breaks in the shade, get out of the sun once in a while. And if you have an emergency plan, okay, then you know what you're going to do in case there is an emergency. Uh, some areas lack cell phone service, some areas uh, are hard to get in and out of, uh, depending on what kind of industry that you're in. And so always plan for an emergency. So you want to think to yourself, what are we going to do if something goes down? What are we going to do if we have an employee accident or heat exhaustion of some sort and we've got to get someone to the doctor? Okay, so be thinking about that. Come up with a good strategy and implement it uh, if you need be. Uh, if, if the need arises. So if you have any questions about heat exhaustion or heat stroke, please feel free to contact me at your discretion. Have a great day.